particular, and they're really, that's one of the strokes, major parts of the stroke sound. Ludlow Street, where the Luna Lounge is, it's very close to where my studio was on 2nd and A. It was two blocks away. So I went there very often to see if there were any bands that were interested in recording with me. The night I went to see what Carrie Black was promoting, there was probably 30 or 40 people in the audience, and the Strokes, when they came on, I didn't know what really to make of them. I really liked watching the drummer Fab play because he looked like he was hurting himself so bad, just not bobbing his head and back down with every smack of the snare drum. I thought, that's got to hurt. How can that guy keep, up, keep that up? But I didn't really think a lot about them other than the fact that here's a, some people at least playing music and maybe I could get them to come to my studio and record. They had a, a presence. They looked good and they, although they were really sloppy, there was a vibe that was obviously powerful. The Strokes got themselves into trouble during that early gig at Don Hills. Julian like pitched a mic stand across the stage and uh, the sound guy said through the monitors, if you do that again, I'm gonna cut you off. And they did it again and he cut him off. And so then, you know, uh, all of them sort of confronted him in the sound booth and were like, yo, what the fuck, man, what's going on? And uh, I think they got banned for playing here. So they'll never play Don Hills again for a couple of reasons. We do pay bands 10% of what we ring up on the bar while they're on stage and right before they go on stage. It usually comes out to about $40 per show for the band. So they probably got 40 bucks, I would think. A certain excitement is brewing. This band is offering something new. This band is reminding rock fans of a cherished era of New York music history. Here is a band drawing on influences that New Yorkers are extremely proud of. So the Strokes are becoming known for their old, new sound. It's true. It's like they took like, you know, what the Stooges kind of had and like the, you know, bits and pieces of all these bands and kind of made it sort of more, you know, what is that word called when you can like swallow it? Yeah, like you can swallow it. It's kind of, I say, good mixture of uh, new stuff and old stuff. That's the Strokes to me. It's not just and a more like a take a sense of 70s, bring it to the 21st century. I was more taken by the music, the influences and style of the music than the actual music itself the first time I recorded them because it reminded me of music that I listened to and I didn't think anyone from the younger generation knew about like the Velvet Underground and uh, Iggy and the Stooges and things like that that I felt the influence in their music and thought this is very unusual that I'm hearing this influence in this day and age. The music always border of somewhere cool and cheesy and everything, but it's really border, you know, it's not on that cheesy side, any side, but has that kind of feeling too. So that's why it's so cool and it's so fresh. I was really happy when the Strokes worked with me that they just wanted to sound like something that wasn't made while everyone else was making, something completely from another time period. In fact, they actually wanted it to sound like you went into the future to discover something from the past you hadn't found yet. I mean, I don't know if it was deliberate or not, but the singing sounds a lot, it's got a lot of Lou Reed in it, you know, a lot of like that sort of like talking, singing like Lou Reed, and they took a lot, they took the Velvet Underground strum it's like a way of listening to Velvet Underground and feeling like you're listening to Velvet Underground, but you're not listening to the Velvet Underground. Many people, well, many people in the media, decided that New York is starting to relive its heyday, its 70s music scene. Perhaps it's a case of nostalgia obscuring reality. Part of the initial hype that the Strokes received in England was also kind of coupled with the idea that 
Maybe the journalists and the media wanted to portray a potential rebirth of a music scene similar to the one in the late 70s where bands were starting to be coherent and working together and there was a new, healthy, vibrant, underground and slightly dangerous rock and roll scene happening in New York. I find this is not true, and it still isn't true, and it never was true. Like, I mean, Interpol doesn't sound anything like the Strokes, and the Strokes sound nothing like the uh, Yeahs, but, you know, they're all sort of kind of being pushed together in the same group. They're similar, but they're not similar, you know, it's sort of the same thing as with Seattle and the sort of grunge thing. You know, none of those bands really sounded the same, they just had a couple of underlying characteristics. So. It's a lot different than it was in the 70s, and many of the bands especially give backlash and attitude to the Strokes behind their back, or they you know, spread rumors, and there's a, lot of, there's a lot of jealousy and not a lot of coherence in the scene there. I don't think that it's, it, it's a New York sound, because it's, it's a rehashing of, of the Stooges and Velvet Underground, which were New York sounds 30 years ago. They are the New York sound for people who live outside of New York. Uh, the truth is that if a band, you know, is big over here, it's big to this New York City rock scene, which New York City is huge, it's five boroughs. So the New York City rock scene is actually really tiny. It's his own scene and everyone knows everyone. But if you go out of that scene in America, people are like, what the hell? Like I said, in Rhode Island, I have friends from high school who still don't even know who the Stokes are. Authentic or not, a rehashing or something fresh, the Strokes are adding new spice to a dead New York rock scene. The Strokes did not revive the New York City music scene. They were part of the New York City music scene, just as they still are part of the New York City music scene. What happened is people discovered that there is a New York City music scene only because they discovered the Strokes. I'm not taking anything away from the Strokes because they are a great New York City band. And also, they have done more than their fair share of bringing exposure to other New York City bands. So I think when the Strokes broke onto mainstream radio, that's when all these other bands were able to, you know, get some attention from the ma major labels. Beforehand, they weren't able to do that. I booked this Kerry Black Promotions night at the Luna Lounge, which is my favorite venue, and it's still the only no-cover venue on the Larry side that you can come in and see free bands. I had a band in New York called Absinthe, and we wanted to use a promoter named Kerry Black, and she invited us to a concert to see uh, how well she could make people come out to nightclubs. And I promoted The Strokes that night, and then also this band at the time, they were called Come On, they're now called Girl Harbor and two bands were playing on her night. One was called Come On, and after that was a band called The Strokes. And I was very excited because I had a studio in New York and I wanted bands to record there. So I had two opportunities to get some work and I went to both bands and said, come to my studio, let's make cheap demos. And Gordon came out just to see my bands, to see if I knew what I was talking about and if I promote good bands. And he actually wanted to record the band come on, but the Strokes were really persistent and they happened to have the money to pay him. And he liked them, but I don't think he was like overwhelmed and that excited by them. Two days later, or the next day, um, two of the members of the Strokes came to check out my studio, look around, check out.